Top executives from leading U.S. and Vietnamese companies in the semiconductor, technology, and aviation sectors convened in Hanoi during President Joe Biden's visit. The Vietnam-U.S. Innovation and Investment Summit included representatives from Google, Intel, Boeing, and others, highlighting collaboration in cloud computing, semiconductors, and AI. Key deals involved Vietnam Airlines purchasing Boeing 737 MAX jets, Microsoft's plans for an AI solution tailored for Vietnam, and NVIDIA partnering on AI projects. The meeting emphasized the U.S. interest in enhancing Vietnam's global role, particularly in chip manufacturing and critical mineral supply. Morocco faces a devastating earthquake aftermath with over 2,100 confirmed casualties, with numbers expected to rise. Isolated mountain regions, challenging for rescuers to access, have suffered the worst destruction. Marrakesh, a popular tourist city, sees residents sleeping on the streets due to structural fears. King Mohammed VI declared three days of mourning and acknowledged aid from Spain, Qatar, the UK, and the UAE. The Moroccan government will coordinate aid offers based on evolving needs, appreciating international assistance amid ongoing efforts to address the catastrophe. The North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has reportedly embarked on his journey to Vladivostok for a summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin. His armored train, a characteristic mode of foreign travel, has left Pyongyang, marking his first international trip in over four years amid the pandemic. The summit may include discussions on North Korea potentially supplying weapons to support Russia's actions in Ukraine. This meeting follows recent advancements in arms negotiations, with Russia's defense minister seeking artillery ammunition from Pyongyang, as per White House information. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak expressed his very strong concerns to China's Premier Li Chang about potential Chinese interference in British democracy. This follows the arrest of a parliamentary employee suspected of spying for China. The arrest, made under the Official Secrets Act, involved a parliamentary researcher allegedly linked to senior Conservative Party politicians. China's embassy in London denied the accusations, calling them malicious slander. The two arrested individuals have been released on police bail until early October. Although Hurricane Lee has regained Category 3 strength in the Atlantic, it is not expected to directly impact Maryland. Forecast models predict it will stay offshore, providing high confidence in its non-landfall threat. While the storm will weaken and become larger, its direct impacts are likely to remain eastward. However, Maryland and Delaware beaches will experience dangerous surf with wave heights of 6 to 8 feet and rip currents due to Lee's large swells. Visitors are advised to only go to beaches with lifeguards during this period. Luis Rubiales has stepped down as president of the Royal Spanish Football Federation RFEF, amid ongoing investigations into his unsolicited kiss on Spain forward Jenny Hermoso. Prosecutors filed a case against Rubiales for sexual assault and coercion following Hermoso's criminal complaint. FIFA had suspended him from all football-related activity for 90 days, while Rubiales maintained the kiss was consensual, Hermoso disagreed. The investigations could result in a football ban, prison sentence, or professional disqualification for Rubiales. His resignation is intended to avoid further harm to Spanish football and the RFEF's 2030 World Cup bid. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his delegation had to remain in India for an additional night due to technical problems with their plane as they attempted to depart from the G20 summit. The delegation will stay until alternate arrangements can be made. During his visit, Trudeau met with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who expressed concerns about anti-India activities in Canada. This development follows Canada's decision to conduct a public inquiry into possible interference by countries including India in Canadian elections. The Benedictines of Mary Queen of Apostles in Kansas City made a remarkable discovery when they exhumed the body of Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster, who passed away in 2019. Her nearly perfect preservation after four years sparked speculation that she might be an incorruptible A-Euro individuals whose bodies don't fully decompose after death, a phenomenon recognized by the Catholic Church. If confirmed, Lancaster would be the first black and American incorruptible. The Abbey intends to explore her potential canonization as a saint. Visitors can view her preserved body daily at the Abbey of Our Lady of Ephesus. Apple is preparing to reveal its iPhone 15 series at its annual September event, potentially featuring the introduction of USB-C charging for the first time. 
This change aligns with an EU mandate for standardized charging by 2024. The lineup could also include the dynamic island feature, replacing the screen notch. Higher-end models might offer a rear-facing periscope lens, a titanium casing, and the latest A17 chip. New colors like navy are expected. Apple seeks to reinvigorate iPhone sales after a few consecutive quarters of decline. Maya, a chihuahua mix that went missing from Hartsfield Jackson International Airport in Atlanta, has been discovered safe and in good health near the North Cargo facilities. The dog had escaped from its crate on August 18 while its owner Paula Rodriguez was attempting to board a flight. Despite extensive search efforts by Delta Airlines, Maya was missing until a FedEx cargo employee informed animal activist Robin Cole Allgood of the dog's sightings. After a joint search, Maya was found hiding under cargo racks and was eventually rescued by Allgood. As the COVID-19 pandemic has shifted into a new phase where SARS-CoV-2 is an endemic virus like the flu, RSV, and other pathogens, while concerns about transmission and variants persist, experts emphasize that COVID is part of our ongoing health landscape. Hospitalizations and deaths remain lower than previous years, indicating progress, but COVID will continue to circulate. Understanding the context of COVID's impact is crucial for managing expectations and responses to future surges. While it's not over, our evolving coexistence with COVID requires a balanced perspective.